Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Gives me great pleasure to bring on board this afternoon, Dr. Reza Gorbani. Yes. Yes. Thank or, you. Originally from Persia, and a fine example again of the richness that immigrants bring to our country. I swear one out of every four guests that I have is either from another country or they were born here very shortly after their parents came over. And you, you just bring a sharpness and a zing that we Native Americans just don't seem to have. So great, great pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So we are going to talk about demand response. What in the heck is... Oh, well, let, let, me, let me back up a little bit first. The Acres of Diamonds fable. There was a man in Africa who had a farm and he was discontent with the farm. He wanted to get rich. He heard that diamonds were the way to get rich and he heard that far and far away lands there were diamonds, sold his farm, went and wandered the world. Twenty years later came back, broke, busted, disillusioned, went back to the farm to see if he could be a farmhand there and here was a mansion and he asked the buyer what in the world happened? And he said, well, I was plowing my field and I saw this interesting looking rock and I picked it up and it was a huge diamond. The <clears throat> moral of the story is you don't have to go far afield to look for the obvious answers. They may be right under your feet. And one of the answers for Hawaiian Electric for clean energy in Hawaii is right under our feet in the form of demand response. What in the world is demand response? That's exactly what we will find out. So if we could have the first slide. This is Hawaiian Electric's uh, plan A for getting from 2016, which is on the left, to 2045, when we have 100% clean energy. And I won't bore you with all the details, but that big blue spot in the middle is synthetic natural gas. And that sort of uh, off greenish splash to the right is alternate fuel source. Well, that was dependent on Nexera. It was dependent on sig significant or synthetic natural gas. We don't have either one. What in the world are we going to do? This is exactly what Dr. Garboni and I are going to talk about. So if we could go to the first demand response slide. And since we don't have all of these fuels that we, that Hawaiian Electric was counting on, uh, you and I are in agreement that there's all these different efficiency measures that we can look at. And in this case, there are several, but in this case, it's demand response. And let, let me walk us through this here. The, there's, Hawaiian Electric produces electricity with different types of generators, and some, like the blue and the green on the bottom, are way, very inexpensive. The further up you go, the more expensive they are to produce electricity. So the number one on the left is what we have now. And what you're seeing on the left is, say, 6 in the morning, and then the two yellow blocks are around 9.30, 10.30 in the morning, and then, boom, it starts going down. What happened? We have all these photovoltaic arrays on all these roofs. The sun really gets serious, and boom, 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 boom. Our demand goes way down. But then what happens on the climb on the right? The sun goes down again. So the production of the PVs go down, and that happens at exactly the time when everybody is coming home from school and work, turning on everything in the homes, and that's 400,000 plus homes. And here's the kicker for Hawaii, tourism. Our tourists during the day, they're on the beach, they're shopping, they're touring. When do they come back to their hotel rooms? Right about the same time. They turn on everything in the hotel room, then they go to the restaurants and the bars, and those are going full blast. And that's why you see this evening peak. That's the peak of the peak is around 7, 7.30 in the evening, and then it goes uh, down again. 
So it's difficult for Hawaiian Electric to adjust to these loads, and that, that's a story in and of itself. So now we look to slide two and what Dr. Urbani is going to talk about. If we could stick to the uh, previous slide, uh, Zuri. Slide two, we're going to take those yellow blocks and put them off to the early morning time and take the red and the yellow blocks and put them way where they are needed with the result that now we have a nice, smooth, cheap load. And if there's anything that any utility loves, it's a nice, smooth, cheap load. So now we can move to the next slide and Dr. Hmm? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now we go to the next slide and Dr. Gurbani is going to take over here. And we're going to look. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, if you could explain what in the heck. Yeah. yeah uh, let's just an example. If you look mm -hmm. at the right side of the fi uh, picture, there's a, a graph that shows the um, the power in the vertical axis in horizontal axis is the load generation reserves and demand response. So let's assume that the load is 400 megawatts. It's a load on island. So, uh, and we have a couple of generators, gener generator number one, two, and three. They are generating the power that to need to satisfy this load. And uh, for in a power system, uh, usually we need uh, uh, reserves. They call it the spinning reserve. You need to have enough reserve. And also you need ramping reserve, which is to, sub to support the uh, uh, system frequency. So you need that amount, uh, you need reserve as part of your generation. So generations are not working at their optimal position. Um, uh, generation points, they're working in a little bit far from it, which is a less efficient. So to make sure that if anything happens to the grid, like you lose a big generation, if suddenly uh, you uh, a big load, uh, like a big pump, comes to the, to the system, so you can m uh, actually m um, uh, match the generation to the load. So what you can do is you can do this one with the actual reserves, which is the actual generators that burning the uh, fuel. It can be a biofuel or it can be actual fossil fuel. So. Or you can replace this one with the demand, which means the loads. And the loads are uh, part of the actually um, your actually appliances, uh, the uh, air conditioning systems, water heaters, and so on, that they can add flexibility to the system. And they can replace this uh, reserve. So if anything happens at the first instant, uh, let's say if you lose a big, genera uh, big generator, the demand can respond first before your reserve, okay? So assume that you increase the uh, penetration of renewable energy like wind power and PV. As you increase them, you increase the uncertainty in the generation. The renewables can be centralized like a big wind farm or PV farm or can be a small uh, residential PV uh, your rooftops. So all aggregate of those adds a huge uncertainty to the grid and it's extremely actually challenging and it's a big headache for utility to deal with it. So demand, as you said, like a diamond is available. Yeah. So the problem is that, yes, we have the demand available, but how mm -hmm. we use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we know that we have available? What kind of demand uh, we have available? Uh, when they are available, how, for what kind of service we use them. Mm -hmm. So we have to implement the um, actually ways to do that. So that's why if you yeah. go back to the, uh, this figure again, uh, maybe in the left-hand side, uh, so you need a systematic way to connect the customers to the utility. That means that uh, in that uh, figure you can see the generation, the utility is generating using the generation systems like uh, and then they, they have a transmission and distribution lines that are connected to your home. But there is a uh, third party, the third party can be part of utility or can be a separate part of the utility. Usually in the electricity market, they are separate than the electricity utility because of the fairness. So they deal with the customers. So 
and they know uh, what kind of availability you have in your load, so they have visibility of the aggregate of these loads, so they know exactly what kind of service they can do, uh, they can give to the utility, and they do transactions with the utility. That means that they compete with the generation. So instead of adding another generator you, uh, for the reserves or the for system re reliability, you add the actually uh, the reserve from the demand. So then either one uh, we, uh, they compete to each other and and and, and uh, at, in actual existing market whoever that can give the uh, lowest cost uh, actually service that wins and gives the service so if you are flexible if you can give flexibility to the system and your service is cheaper than adding another generation keeping another generation uh, um, on as part of the power electricity system mm -hmm then it makes sense to have more demand response. Uh, basically, if you had more renewable generations, you need a huge amount of flexibility and demand response basically is a very, very good solution. Yeah. And th this, I'm looking at this, this requires a heck of a lot of communication back and yes. forth with... Yes, yes, yes. And it's almost, if, if you're going to the residential level, yeah. we're talking tens of thousands. Thousands of these, yeah. 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 So they, there are grand challenges. There are technologies that need to be innovated. Mm -hmm. There are ways, I mean, you have big loads like hotels, they have a, a HVAC system in the mm -hmm. building. HVAC systems, they, in the HVAC systems, they have different hierarchy, and the biggest part is the compressor. They have mm -hmm. a big compressor uh, that actually uh, j uh, that provides the, the uh, uh, cool water to the, mm -hmm. to the building. Uh, so, how do you link that, uh, uh, that big compressor to the electricity network and make sure that you can give the service that they want? So mm -hmm. this is a big load, like half a megawatt or a couple of megawatts, depends on the size of the building. And you can move to the small residential homes, so they have huge value because you have an aggregate of many people. So it's mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. more easier to deal with many than one, okay, in terms of reliability, maintenance, availability, and so on, and robustness mm -hmm. of the service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the only bottleneck is the uh, reliability of the devices that they put that I'm going to explain maybe in what we are doing in my lab, and also the communication. Mm -hmm. How do you communicate with the grid uh, in a way that they want, and also the computation, what kind of computation you do locally to give the service. So this is a, these are the grand challenges of demand response. That's yeah, absolutely. why at the university we love these problems because mm -hmm. good yeah. stuff to think of. You, you know, I didn't uh, even introduce you. I got yeah. <laughs> you're a pro professor at UH School yes. of Engineering. And we need to take a break, but I want to cite one of your papers. He writes, the doctor writes many papers, including closed loop control of an intentionally adjustable compliant actuator. That was now, my PhD work. <laughs> <laughs> Completely now, different work. <laughs> now, on, on that cheery note, we will take a break and be back in one minute. Okay, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, a wonderful show we do, uh, 4 to 4.30 every single Wednesday. And the progenitors of this show, uh, Sharon Moriwaki and Ray Starling to my left. So how's it going? How's it going, Sharon? Do you like the show? I love the show. Yeah. And I hope everybody watches the show and joins in and gives us their comments on clean energy. Yeah. Every week. Every week with incredible yeah. guests and topics and discussion and mostly candor. This, we like this candor. month is all renewable energy and next month we're going to look at procurement. Each month we have a different series yeah. uh, and so it's, it's going very well. We learn well. so much. We keep the oh, public so, so well advised the best we can. Ray, what do you think? Well, I think this is the place where it's happening. This is where we discuss the latest of what, what is going on in the energy world. And, it's a great place to be, a great place to meet some new people that are into the energy world that uh, we, uh, we haven't talked to before. So I'm happy to be here. Okay, this is a, you know, energy is the biggest thing happening in Hawaii, whether you realize it or not, it's gonna affect all of our lives, is affecting all of our lives. And it's like a million things are happening in energy. How could you possibly understand what's happening unless you are informed? This is your way, this is the deal. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, every Wednesday, 4 o'clock, right? Join us. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. The very honorable guest today is Dr. Reza Gorbani. 
professor of engineering at UH and a great, great uh, innovator. Our topic today is demand response, as you know, and the if a utility is going to implement demand response, they have two choices. Either we were talking about reserve, if they have to adjust, they can take from their reserve, or they can take via a demand response uh, uh, load. And let, let's give, just in case people don't understand it thoroughly yet, let's give a, a very simple example of demand mm -hmm. response, mm -hmm. namely uh, water heating at, at the residential level, which happens to be the case with, with mm -hmm. your own uh, mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that work, uh, the interface between your home and Hawaiian Electric and, and the water heater? Yeah, if let's say your water heater is not solar water heater, mm -hmm. it's not solar thermal, is uh, is connected. You have an electric heater inside your water heater and it's connected to the uh, HECO. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's great. I mean, utility is great. And uh, so, uh, in that case, uh, for example, you have you can have a, a l electric plug or a smart plug or or uh, that can can give the demand response service to the utility. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a couple of different ways. It depends what kind of service you can give. So let's say. Um, you can say if the f system frequency goes below a threshold, let's say system frequency it needs to stay f 60 hertz. Mm -hmm. the, the, the utility fight Absolutely. for it to yeah. all the time, tries mm -hmm. to keep it the same. So if you lose a generator or, or there's a big bump in the load um, <coughs> or generation, suddenly you have to meet, with, uh, you have to uh, always match the load and the, mm -hmm. and the generation. So in that case, uh, the frequency always changing. Frequency is not uh, 60 hertz. So uh, your load can be disconnected from the grid if the frequency goes below a threshold. Mm -hmm. Then that that as you gave as actually a response to uh, to the grid needs. That means mm -hmm. that grid needs mm -hmm. more power. So so you reduce the demand, the load. That means that grid has enough power to mm -hmm. meet the load. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of response that you give. So in your in your uh, water heaters, there's a small circuit uh, that calculates the system frequency, and based on the threshold that is programmable, you can uh, mm -hmm. basically respond to the grid. This is a simple example. Yeah. It can be more challenging. That means that your air conditioning can be more smart. Uh, it can give uh, your uh, temperature that you need, but also it can give service to the utility, your refrigerator, your stove even. So even mm -hmm. if your stove disconnect from the grid uh, five seconds when you're cooking uh, something, you, you don't mm -hmm. even know it, but that is important for the grid reliability. Absolutely. Significantly important. Yeah. For yeah. So those kind of things you have to add. So basically the more appliances becomes more smarter and becomes more or you can just schedule them, you can program yeah, them. Yeah. And the yes. reason I talked about water heating yeah. is residential water heating. You've got a tank full of yeah. 130 degree water. Yeah. It goes off for even 15 minutes. That's yeah. generally not, not a big deal, but you're doing Hawaiian Electric a service and they in turn are rewarding you uh, fi financially. Yes. They give, give you a special exactly. deal. Exactly. Yeah. For the service that you give to the utility, utility or give it back to you in terms of mm -hmm. credit or actual dollar value. Mm -hmm. So also there's also some other issues with the demand because you have to schedule, let's say at night when you take your shower, the water is, I mean, you don't need that water and your, um, your um, uh, water tank to be actually, to be hot again for the next half mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. But the control of that water heater is designed in a way you can set thermostat. When you use it, right after you use it, right after the water is cold, it just starts to warm up. Mm -hmm. so that's why you see these big peaks yeah, in the load. Right, yeah. You don't need that. So mm -hmm. you can shift it easily, mm -hmm. but quickly programming your, uh, your water heater, then in the middle of the night, let's say 3 a.m., it can come up. Yeah. When you have a better yeah. wind, yeah. it can come up. So those mm -hmm. kind of tweaks uh, uh, that adds more, I mean, uh, intelligence or smartness to your appliances, to mm -hmm. whatever you, are, you have connected to the grid, those are demand response. Yeah. And yeah. you need to find a way to I um, mean, get credit for those by yeah. buying those devices, by adding these capabilities. And, and that's yeah. where the, these middlemen come in. Yes, the aggregators. <laughs> yeah. So here, here we have smart homes. Now, yeah. where in the world do we start? Where, what's number one on this graph? And how, okay. how do we follow so this? So let me explain here? this one. Yeah. This is a technology we developed in my lab. 
uh, for demand response. So we have different uh, things. So since we, our idea is that since we have uh, Wi-Fi in most of the houses, so mm -hmm. we use the existing Wi-Fi, we add uh, actually a communication gateway, which is connected to your uh, router in your home. It creates a second the network. And this via Wi-Fi com communicates with your appliances. So. Uh, in the in your circuit breaker, uh, we have sensors that you can actually uh, connect and read uh, the uh, water, the electricity consumption, and from that we have algorithms that this uh, that detect what kind of appliances you have, water heaters, a refrigerator, TV, or what else, and we have plugs that you can actually connect to your uh, water heaters or uh, stoves or, or air conditioning and it has it can communicate the uh, via I mean uh, to your devices let's say via IR it can communicate to your uh, air conditioning units or it can turn on and off your appliances based on the system needs so it has a controller to that measures the frequency voltage current and then responds to the system and all of these can communicate uh, through this gateway that is connected to your router and this creates a uh, secured network so nobody can come and see what you're doing. So it's not based on the Zigbee or other technologies. It's based on Wi-Fi. It's encrypted. It's secure. You only have the password. Nobody can come and see what's going on. And then that data is still uh, from the gateway goes to a server which aggregator has access and you have access. And then you can see what's going on in your home. And, uh, and then the utility get without knowing whose home is uh, the data f uh, coming mm -hmm. from. They, they have an access to an aggregate of this data. How many appliances of this type and those type are connected and how, what kind of service they can give to you. So they have visibility of exactly what's going on and exactly what kind of service that you have. So they have better plan in their operation room of, how, of the size of the battery that they need or what kind of mm -hmm. actually generation are on site uh, and so on. So this is a... Um, yeah, this is a uh, this is a technology that we are trying to actually work with a local company here mm -hmm. to go to the market, basically and from my and lab. And you're you're saying it's pretty well or absolutely hack proof. So is, uh, everything yeah. is encrypted, so mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. the actually the IP behind all of these I mean devices, and uh, I mean the IP that we have beyond this is how we make it secure, mm -hmm. how we make it. Uh, encrypted and how make make sure that nobody can hack and come and see what's yeah. going on and the privacy is a big issue but it's still mm -hmm. uh, anytime you deal with the data like your Gmail yeah. or whatever you need to Ooh, yes, you, yes, you yes. need to be aware of the uh, of the of the privacy of your data and also mm -hmm. you need to understand what kind of service you're giving to the to the utility mm -hmm. so and, and they, they don't want to pry into your lives they just no no no, to, no, yeah. no 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 so, no yeah. it's all so based it's on all the limited, need yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's also if you, uh, the aggregator actually has an algorithm in a way that actually gives you in a service and based on the service that you give to the aggregator uh, you get your money back from there mm -hmm. so basically you are a generator but yeah, you're a load precisely. but you're a generator yeah. mm -hmm. you're a negative generator yeah so that's the idea about demand response so I'm, I was, as we were talking, I was thinking about what could be turned off, not, not just for seconds, as you yeah. were mentioning, but for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, depending. And I'm thinking of dishwasher, yeah. clothes washer, dryer, even a refrigerator, I think, can be. If it's yeah. off for yeah, yeah. five Cycles, minutes yeah. and then on for 15 minutes, off for five minutes. Air conditioning. It's air conditioning. Uh, you have a what thermal air? generator in your home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is heat, so it's a, it's a storage. Everything is a storage. Mm -hmm. your, as you mentioned, your water heater is in a storage. Yeah, your yeah, temperature yeah. in your uh, home is a storage. Mm -hmm. Your refrigerator is a storage. You can have a small battery. That battery, the same way, can communicate with the grid and give service. Mm -hmm. So the next stage is to how to use them and how you in incentivize this one and to make sure that everybody can afford to put this technology in the home. And not only afford it, but also make some money out of them. Absolutely, and, and that brought up a uh, point that's always important to me, namely we looked at that first graph and saw that LNG, liquefied right. natural gas, blew there. I believe that if Hawaiian Electric had converted to that, converting a, an existing power plant was going to cost something like $250 million yeah. Just to convert, and now we've got to still pay for that gas and have people operate it. Right. What would be the cost 
say, say to to a, a homeowner, for the cost to Hawaiian Electric, obviously, and then I imagine the homeowner would have to buy the interface. Yes, yeah, they yeah. It depends what kind of appliances they have. Mm -hmm. So. For our, the, I mean, we got grants from National Science Foundation, the mm -hmm. Department of Energy, mm -hmm. to reduce the cost of those devices from $500 to $55, yeah. for example. Yeah. So we have spent millions of dollars to reduce the cost of the technology from, uh, from the actually the manufacturer to your home. Mm -hmm. So oh, when, if you look at the scale, you, you save millions of dollars yeah. Yeah. by saving maybe $200 for each or $300 for each and, uh, and system in your house. And if it became popular, the economies of scale would kick yes. in and your per unit cost. Would exactly. Drop, so, so, yeah. so as a, I mean, depends uh, what kind of appliances you have, uh, what kind of service you give to the utility. So it can be between uh, $20 to, uh, to $100. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, and, and in future, the appliances become smarter. Say, say, all yeah. these manufacturers, I mean, if you go to Home Depot, uh, you see uh, you see water heaters, Wi-Fi enabled water heaters. Yes, you yes, see Wi-Fi yes. enabled yeah, air conditioning. Yeah, so even your toaster, your oven, everything mm -hmm. be will become, because the data is not only to service the utility, the data is for you to understand, oh, when I have to mm -hmm. change this and that, mm -hmm. the maintenance, you have better, your car, your electric car, or your even your car mm -hmm. will be connected to the grid. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's all about you as well. So mm -hmm. have a better understanding uh, of uh, when and where, by what kind of appliances. Precisely, <laughs> and, and what to do with them. And you're going to get so much assistance from all yeah. of this new yeah. information yeah, yeah. that you know, we keep talking about the expensive electricity. It sounds yeah. to me like if all this were to happen, the initial capital outlay isn't all that much for using a lot less fuel yes. that Hawaiian Electric does not have to pay for, and it could be realistic exactly. that our utility exactly. rates would actually go down. Yeah, and oh, and an EIS, there's no environmental impact statement necessary here. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, yeah, it's much easier to go to the market. Mm -hmm. It's much easier mm -hmm. to go to the market. You're not yeah. producing any fuel or Mm -hmm. And uh, no, no controversy, no, controversy, no protests. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so is <laughs> this is why I personally look at the whole greater uh, efficiency field yeah. and think that this is really, really important. Yeah, but yeah, it, all of this technology that we're developing at the end, it goes to each appliances. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, so, but yeah. if you look at this one, this is a surface of the problem. If you go deeper, is a fundamental and math behind it how you calculate the best price, how you aggregate these uh, uh, services that the, this demand response devices give to the utility, who is, I mean, what is makes sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so all of this has a great, ma I mean, uh, beautiful mathematical problem that we are solving. I mean, I mean um, not only us, uh, the University of Hawaii, but also rest of the research groups uh, mm -hmm. in the state, also uh, nationally and internationally, they work on it. It's a great, Yep, problem. It's, it's <laughs> a huge future we're looking at on that very cheery note with the word beauty. We have to bring our beautiful program to a halt again. So, Think Tech Hawaii, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Dr. Reza Gorobani, University of Hawaii. And please come back in a year or so and we'll follow up on this. Sure, <laughs> I will be pleased. Okay. Thanks, Hawaii. Oh.